Bearcat Bounce Podcast back at it again. As always, it's Monday. Dogs are barking. First day of work. Weeks ahead of us. That means that there's no better time. No, no greater moment than today, than right now, to bring back the Danco Transmission and Danco Auto Care Bearcat Bounce Podcast, the BBP here on BCJ, which means that uh, it's, it's time to welcome in my two buds, two pals, two guys that are ready to to break down the, the thrills of Bearcat football as we head into fall camp. That means without further ado, Aaron Smith and Chad Brendel. Aaron, Chad, guys, how are we? I'm doing all right. Uh, got my tree cut up in the front yard and oh. uh, rain came. Uh, it, no, well, they finally did. They, they cut the lines, uh, but they didn't take care of any bit of the tree. Um, so started started mowing today and Rains are coming in, so didn't get to finish because three acres is four acres is a lot. Um, gotta have three hours for that, but boo hoo, get after it tomorrow. That was a subtle, uh, subtle little uh, pump up for yourself. You know, I have three or four acres I'm working with here, real tough to to mow the lawn every once in a while. But no, I, Aaron, gotta, gotta reel me this. Are you getting the rain that was rolling through Indianapolis here about what I'd say, uh, about maybe seven hours ago, eight hours ago. I'm going to imagine that's what's it. Uh, that's yeah. usually how it works. It is a, it is a booty spank and, and then some. And have fun with that rain out there. Let's hope you don't uh, flicker flatter. But I'm happy that we have you. Happy that you're here. Chad, how are we? Next question. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'm here. Yes. Right? It's, yes. I'm here. Sometimes that's the answer. I hear you. But, uh, What's also here is uh, the Danco Transmission BBP. A quick shout out to Danco Transmission and Auto Care. Mention BBP, mention Chad, mention Trees and Power Lines, aka Aaron Smith. Get ten ten dollars off your next vehicle. Change ten percent off your next fix it, Mister uh, Danco Joe over there. Danco Transmission, big shout out and big thank you as always. But also around the corner, guys, football. Guys, we've been breaking it down a bit on the BCJ pod, breaking it down a little bit on the nightcaps. Each step of the way is getting closer and closer. Chad, you had your sit down with Luke today. I did. I imagine, I imagine that was as thrilling as it's ever been. And that's coming it out. Was, yeah. Three part series. Did we come up with a decision quite yet on that? Or yeah, I think we're gonna do a three part series. Um, I am uh, trying to go rendering. for that ring. Trying to go for that Emmy, huh? Yeah, three-parter. <laughs> uh, I'm yeah. rendering the first part right now. Okay. So hopefully we'll have that up during the show. And then when everybody gets done watching the show, then you can go over to uh, the YouTube channel and catch the uh, the premiere of my first. So the way I break it up is the same way I break it up pretty much every year. The first 10 minutes or so, uh, we talk a lot of like just the basics, mm-hmm. uh, and then we do offense, position by position, uh, and then defense, position by position, defense and special teams, uh, position by position. Getting his his thoughts on everything as we head into camp. So right. uh, tonight, the the first part will go live tomorrow. Offense will go live, uh, and then Wednesday. Defense. I might even do just do tomorrow, like after early afternoon, do part Mid-day two, and then tomorrow and then night, night, yeah, do part three, and that way everybody is uh, ready to go when camp gets rolling Wednesday morning at Nippert Stadium. So uh, it's that time. It's 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 officially. I, I said it on Twitter. This is for me, at least. I know mm-hmm. not everybody is where I'm at in this situation, but mm-hmm. this. Today, the day that I talked to Luke for the camp preview, it's football season. Like that's yeah. it, it. Just it's just that's the. I'm done with AAU basketball. I, yeah. I've turned the page. The basketball team is off uh, until school starts, so they've got like three weeks of downtime for basketball. It is officially here at Bearcat Journal, football season. Football season. The pigskin falls falls in the air. We're, we're getting semi cooler temperatures. It got down to like sixty degrees here on Friday. It's it, you can smell it. It's right around. It's the corner. supposed to get hot. 
like as yeah. soon as camp, as soon as we get to right. higher ground, it's supposed to be hotter than hell again. I think. No, I or think at least last time I checked. That's how it's supposed to be, right? Got to got to get the grueling days in there while you can. But uh, yeah, I I mean, kind of along the lines of what you're saying, that's, that's kind of how the calendar is in the NFL as well. When you get you know rookie mini camp leading into training camp, leading into preseason, leading into the start of NFL football season. I mean, it's kind of the same right now for the Bearcats. Is this is. Yeah. Pretty much the what? Wow. What's the? Oh, so I'm looking at I'm, I'm I just looked at the advanced forecast for the first time in a while, Not and uh, I don't see a temperature above 82 between now and Monday the 15th. Hey, <laughs> okay. not I'll as hot as it used to be. Yeah, I'll Uh-oh. take like look, man. There's been many a years we've been out. Aaron's been out there. I think you were even out there one of those days where it was like. Oh yeah, ninety three and one hundred and fourteen on the turf, and I had jeans on. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say. You I think Aaron wore jeans. Smart. I came from work. Should have had shorts in the car. Aaron had the jeans on. I, I, I was rocking shorts. That was actually when the three of us. I think we got a little bit in the uh, Let It Fly series. I mean, award winning Let It Fly series. That is. Uh, That's when Aaron thought here. everything was on fire, right? <laughs> that might have been. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Kaz. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Kaz. The uh, everything's on fire, but no, it was a uh, right around the corner. Which it's it's interesting. You and Luke did the same kind of kind of lead up. You know, that's it's, it's kind of how we've been going step by step here. It's you know breaking down last season, moving on to what the offense brings. Questions on the offense side, rolling into the defensive side. Little little sprinkle of special teams, and then poof, you're uh, you're at the start of camp. So last week. We did the offensive storylines, offensive superlatives, this, that, and the other. This week, we're going to do defense. A little bit of uh, Black Cat style, if you will. Uh, dominant defense last year, obviously, coming off the heels of another dominant defense back in 2020. Lots gone from the defense, though. Uh, but a lot of the players rolling in and filling in for them are highly touted recruits, highly touted players who have been developing the same way that the high-level players that left the program last season to the NFL and to whatever their life is now, has the same sort of pedigree, the same sort of development that they had. So, guys, I, I got to bring it up first. I'm going to shoot it down to Aaron. What's what's your number one defensive storyline that you're keeping an eye on early in camp? It's got to be secondary. Um, okay. Just you, we, uh, so many guys potentially changing, a uh, uh, changing of guard, changing of positions, new guys coming in that, look like they could potentially take a position. I mean, there's a lot going on in the secondary, and that's not to say there's not a lot going on at defensive line and at linebacker, but right. my goodness, secondary is it's, everyone's going to be watching secondary. Oh, yeah. And I've, I've got some some questions in the superlatives exactly positioned for secondary. Chad, taking out secondary, which is definitely the the number one hot topic of the defense, what's, uh, what's your storyline you're looking for in the Black Cats? Quite the, the exact opposite. Okay. Can this defense, like, how do they transition to being a more of a front seven dominated unit? Okay. Um, because that, that's where, you know, especially Van Briggs, Taylor, Pace Pace, right? Van Fossen, Huber, Thomas, like, that's where the bulk of this talent is. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's the maybe the easiest way to make up for so much uncertainty in the secondary right is to be carried by your front seven for a little while mm-hmm. you know and, and this has been the reality is like since year two this has been a safety driven safety and corner a secondary driven defense right you know Forrest, Wiggins, Cook, Kobe. Hicks, Kobe, Sauce, Bush. Like, that has been functionally why this defense has been so good. But if you look at Mike Tressel's history, he's a linebacker guy. Yep. Where he's had the most success in his career is developing linebackers at Michigan State and putting them in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Now it's going to be kind of – you know, playing into his wheelhouse where I think last year and rightfully so it was a matter of just keeping the, the train rolling, right? Like right. keeping it on the tracks. We're, we're, 
we're damn good. Keep doing what we're doing. Now we have a chance to maybe do things a little bit different. Maybe we see some more of the zone blitz. Maybe we we see some more of that, you know, exotic zone coverage and pressure that the trestle is kind of known for. So um I, I I agree with what Aaron said. I just think maybe the storyline is something we haven't um really gotten into yet and that the strength might just have to be a little different this year. Cause you don't like it, it just because, you know, it, it, just because that's how it was done with those guys doesn't mean we still have to do it that way. Now that the names and faces have changed substantially. Right. Yeah. I, well, I mean, interesting take because obviously you could say that it, it was kind of complimentary last year and the year before where, you know, lockdown corners and lockdown defensive backs allow the defensive line to then put on sure. pressure without being too afraid of of over committing or or going too hard and knowing that the back end's got you covered, knowing that you could bring some, like you said, exact blitzes, you know, with whether it be a, a linebacker off the edge or whether it be a delayed blitz by, you know, Will Huber or or Jordan Blanco. And and so yeah, I mean, now is it a little bit more of a you put the stress on the on the front seven, and their pressure itself leads to difficulty throwing the football, flushing out of the pocket, and you know turnovers that way or ailed passes that way instead of more the defensive back driven side. But not mine is definitely linebacker though. Um, been doing all these all these write ups throughout you know the the weeks leading up to it, and and linebacker is one that just catches my eye because. And, and Dave kind of mentioned this, and, and you did as well. It, there's only three spots with so many talented players. And, I mean, you look at the, the fact that Van Boston and, and Deshaun Pace, they were rotating in and out, and they put up astronomical numbers, 165 combined tackles between the two of them. I, I mean, those are just numbers that are very hard to replicate for any other program, but you have the exact same two players back this upcoming season. Can they continue that that stretch? and? Does Van Fossen move around? Does Pace move around? And then, of course, on the other side, Ivan Pace. Aaron, you mentioned it, how he was fifth overall of the uh, off-ball linebackers or, or, or you know, on the, the Buckus Award list, on all these different defensive award lists, and he's coming in and potentially being the backup to Jaheim Thomas. And right. how often is he going to see the field? And then, of course, Will Hubert. Does he make this astronomical step where – he all of a sudden is looking like an NFL player. Does he lead the team in tackles? It's so many different questions on that second level, and I think that they could rotate enough to the point where they are all just feasting nonstop throughout the game. And I think that's got to be where the focal point is of the defense because you've got that big hog molly defensive line, and then you, you've got that you got that second behind them that's looking as strong as it can be. So um, I'm looking forward to see how they – implement different linebacker looks, you know, whether they do have some where four backers on the field potentially at the same time with Jaheim Thomas as a bit more of a rush end than just a traditional linebacker. I don't know. There's there's a lot of different ways to uh to spin this. So I'm I'm looking forward to that, which brings us straight into superlatives. It's Chad's favorite topic. He calls you and I Aaron and he says <laughs> we need to do the superlatives for the next two episodes. And we're like Gosh, we really don't like the superlatives, but we'll do it. We'll do it. The boss man says it, so we'll do it. Yeah, yeah that's how, yeah. that's how that conversation goes. Yeah, that's how it goes. You really, you really got me on that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're start at the top though. Aaron, waka waka waka, waka waka waka. Enjoy your tomatoes, uh, Aaron. <laughs> leading tackler for a little bit of a substance. I'll just say. Last season, it was Joel DeBlanco and Darian Beavers. Brian Cook was third, so all three are gone. Year before that, Darrell White and Beavers. Year before that, Derek Forrest and Brian Wright. So it's kind of been the the linebacker core and then a little bit of safety help as well. Who are you eyeing for your leading tackler this upcoming season? Um, Sean Pace. I, he's the leading returning tackler from a yep. year ago. He obviously put up some phenomenal numbers, but the question is the the 50-50 snaps potentially or, you know, finding the amount of times to get on there. Obviously, it didn't really matter last season when you when you have 90, what, 95 tackles what he ended with. So what's the uh, reasoning behind that, just taking the next step? He's got a nose for the ball. And, yeah, I think uh, with, with some of the – 
some of the accolades that he's received in preseason, um, in addition to the accolades he re- received at the end of last season, uh, I think he's just going to continue to build on that. He's had a lot of, uh, a lot of downtime, um, as far as off the field, um, here in the pre, like in through spring brawl and what have you, as he's been bouncing back from an injury. And so I, I think that, uh, he's coming in with fresh legs and I, I think he's going to be hungry. There you go. Chad, you agreeing? I mean, it, I think lo- logically the answer is humor. Right. Because you're going to see a, a heavy rotation at, at the dollar and you're going to see a heavy rotation at, on the weak side between Jaheim Thomas and Ivan Pace and Deshaun Pace and, and Ty Van Fossen at the, the dollar. So Huber is going to be the one that's, that's on the field probably more than any of them. Right. So I think that would, you know, just the the nature of how that room is going to play out. I think that would be my pick just uh, from a, from a pure snaps perspective, there isn't anybody. And then that look, I think, I think Jack Dingle is going to be really good. But as Fick told me today, as good as we think he's going to be, he's a true fre- or a redshirt freshman right. as the quarterback of the defense. Like, yep. it's, it, that's a challenge. So uh, I'll go Huber just because he's going to be on the field a ton. Yeah, and obviously the safety position, Hicks isn't, isn't one to come up and pile on a bunch of tackles. It would be threats. Do do we know if you know by the end of camp does threats solidify the role? Does, is he on the field enough to to rack up enough tackles and reach that Derek Forrest number? Probably not this early in his career. That that second that second level of the linebacker position is probably a little bit too strong to have as many plays funnel to him. Uh so I mean, here's what was so crazy. There's no way they can match what 170 tackles was it from Ty Van Boston yeah. and, and Deshaun Pace last year? Yeah, like, 95 and 70. So 165 tackles from one position. Like neither of them played anywhere other than that dollar strong side linebacker spot. It totaled 165 tackles. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you would say technically Jaheim obviously was the backup for Beavers last year. Jaheim finished with 14 tackles on the year. Nowhere near close. What that number was to Blanco's backup probably last year, you would say, was obviously Huber. Nowhere near close adding those two together. So, yeah. I mean, that's just a a dynamic one-two punch at one side. And then on the other side, I I mean, Ivan Pace was 10th in the country last year in tackles. Right. So, I mean, speaking of a nose for the ball, what if if those two – kind of do the same split last season as as Pace and, and Van Fossen did. And all of a sudden, Ivan Pace is the one right there with 95 to 100 tackles himself. So, I don't know. There's there's so many different ways to go about it. But I agree with you. The amount of snaps in the middle for Will Huber. Uh, does, does he take that step up and be a legit run stopper on top of the pass rushing specialist per se as he was last season? Yeah, I, I think everyone is confident that he'll do that. So um, I think Huber, but I, I'm on Aaron's side as well with Pace, how just playmaker he is. And I've rewatched so many games within the past like <laughs> two weeks. And he and Van Fossen, it, it's crazy watching them because they really do fly all over the field. And a lot of their tackles are the ones that are like, right there near the line of scrimmage or like a three yard game where they come out of the picture. Like they're not even in the picture and they sweep in and just tackle them right away. It's just a phenomenal duo one, two punch, but I'm going to go Huber in the middle with just with the amount of snaps that he's going to potentially have. I would bring up next would be sack leader, which uh, I just th- wondered what you were wanting to pass along. I blocked him on Twitch. Oh, okay. Oh, did he have something good? Something juicy. I don't. I don't. No. I thought. I think it's okay I to was have. Just being funny. I think it's okay to have people from other fan bases hanging out. I just was as, being funny. As long as they're not being. Oh. Obnoxious. The the, uh, the one from the ask the, what is it the Citronauts down there? Yeah. yeah. The Orlando Technical Institute Citronauts. 
Well, thank you for the the listen. Go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, That's like what I'm saying. <laughs> it's so, we're, the more that we do this, the more that you're going to see. I'm not allowed to in. joke. Well, I didn't know if you actually blocked him. Well, I mean, I did, but then I unblocked him. All right. Okay. Well, hey, <laughs> hey, we'll take we'll take them any way they come. But uh, next will be sack leader. Um, and and more and more, you guys see a lot of players and coaches kind of say that sacks are a you know it's a it's a number that they don't really care too much about. Yes, it, it's an awesome counting number. It's something that the media members love to really touch on and and cuz cuz it's a finite number but it's more you know pressures is something that that a lot of people like you know just just overall effectiveness that like Amaj Sanders had last season but he only finished with what 2.5 sacks on the year yeah 2.5 sacks on the season but he had 7 the year before which did lead the team uh Curtis Brooks actually led the team in sacks last year and if you watched him play he was a beast uh but he was followed up with Joel DeBlanco, and then and then two years ago, it was Brian Wright who led the team in sacks. So kind of that uh, rush end or interior lineman in Curtis Brooks or even a linebacker could potentially lead the team in sacks. I, I This is kind of a fascinating one because – A lot of answers. A lot, a lot of different names that you can really throw in and say, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, Aaron, I'm going to pass it back to you. Man, I guess – I guess I'm going to say Juwan Briggs. Uh, yeah, it's not a, not a bad pick. I Boy. just, I, I've seen his pictures <laughs> and <laughs> don't know how anyone can physically stop him. He looks like a giant human. He's always looked like a giant human and somehow he's gotten bigger. <laughs> um, Had three sacks last year, three yeah, sacks he, his he, last year at Virginia as well. Came on real big at the end of the season, and again, I think it's going to be one of those things where you ride some momentum going into the season this year. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, that's I I can't bet against that guy. Chad, do we have you or? Yeah, I'm here. I'm Aaron here. picked Jawan Briggs, which I, I, I mean, you look at last year, Brooks had seven point five sacks on the year. A lot of that was probably some attention to Maya J on the outside, potential, you know, blister on the other side. And maybe it, it, it put Curtis in a lot of one on one situations, but he capitalized. He, he took full advantage of him. Who do you have as your odds on favorite or, or just a guess leading into a uh, fall? So here's camp? the thing I, I think this is going to be a relatively no, low number. Because I don't know that, that there's just one guy that's going to tally a bunch of sacks this year right that doesn't mean i think that there won't be a a considerable number of sacks Mm -hmm. i just think it's going to be by committee almost as opposed to um you know just the dominance that we saw from my and and curtis brooks last year as as a tandem um i have said when answering this question watch out for the linebackers Right. Because you're going to have those big bodies in your front three Mm -hmm. that are going to be able to take up space. And that's where you can see a lot of blitzing from the linebackers. Um, But ultimately, I think if I'm picking a leader, I think it'll be Jabari. Okay. I think we're going to see a, a breakout from him. Right to where he really becomes a factor uh, getting up the field, making plays in the backfield um, and and making, ultimately making plays on the quarterback. Uh, I would guess that would you say the lead was like seven and a half last year for Brooks? Yep. And seven the year before for my J in only 10 games. though. I I would say this will be like five and a half to six and a half sacks. And there's going to be like, Mm -hmm. three, four, five guys kind of all in that range between Jabari, between, um, Briggs between Malik Huber, uh, has been known as a guy that, that is really good at rushing the passer. You're going to see Jaheim Thomas do it quite a bit. Well, and um, what if you saw Jaheim Thomas move down at playing off of that defensive end at some, some he's going to, I mean, when they go four down yeah. line and he's going to do that, either you'll see Jaheim there or you'll see Jabari slide the three technique inside and Eric Phillips, uh, who coach Fickle had some. 
So very interesting things to say about Eric Phillips today. Okay. That that you'll get in that that defensive preview video. That's called a that, tease. Um, it's a tease. Uh, it took me by surprise a little bit how uh, the way he spoke about Eric Phillips and his role this year. Okay. That is a uh, late night VBP tease for you. Keep you keep you followed in. Um, yeah, I mean, that, like both of you guys said, there's so many names that kind of fall into this list. What if you know, what if Noah Potter has a huge fall camp and all of a sudden he's seen as a sure. yeah, that's another a, name that's that's got a chance for sure to be right up there. Right, where it's like okay, it's third down, definite passing situation. You throw Potter, a fresh Noah Potter out there against a off of the tackle that's you know a little worn down. I mean. Brent, did you see Noah Potter has started a uh, food review on TikTok? Oh, no, I have not. Yeah, he, he's he's using his TikTok platform to do food he's reviews. He's going to eat his way through Cincinnati, essentially. Yep. Oh, man. Well, as long as Brady and the nutritionists are there to make sure that he's not hammering the uh, the skylines too, too much, I guess. But I'm sure, what, keep on adding it on, just powering through. But, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tune in. i to tune into that. Has has he had any out yet, or is it kind of? Yeah, he did. Brew Burger was his okay. first one that I saw. Okay, is is it in the uh, in the air of a uh, you know pizza review a la El Prez, Dave Portnoy, or is it kind of? I mean, he gave it his review on the fries, his review on the burger. Okay. Mentioned he doesn't like tomatoes, so that he got the tomato paste on the side, and he's like, "No, nah, that ain't for me." Or tomato jam, tomato okay. jam, I guess it was. Fair. Fair. But... So so Noah Potter, food enthusiast. Yeah, apparently food potential, aficionado. Potential, potential pass rushing specialist. So he's what six uh, three or six five, six six, two ninety five. He's a monster. I yeah, don't think he's a, really. That's on a guy a, that eats a lot. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think he's on a. I need to watch how much he I was, eat. I think right, was, right, just <laughs> pile it on. Yeah, six six two seventy five is what he, he was listed on Ohio State's um, website. But I, uh, if if I had to pick one right now, it, it would be Will Huber, uh, just because. The fact that you look at last season and not only did Huber have three and a half sacks on the year, which was, pardon me, three sacks on the year, which is a, a large number considering he only had 11, sorry, 13 recorded tackles on the year. So that's a, what, you're the math whiz. A fourth of his tackles are sacks pretty much. And then you add in five and a half from DeBlanco last season as well. And you think that the whole lion's share of the middle linebacker position will probably be going to Huber. So he's going to be used as not only the Joel DeBlanco type sack artist, but that that delay sack guy that he was able to get his three sacks in last season. Also had one against Bryce Young in the uh, Cotton Bowl. So um, I'd go Huber. Just kind of the same reason why he's, he's in the lead for most tackles for me as well. Just the amount of snaps. So you add it up. But I wouldn't be mad if Mr. Food Man comes out on the lead. Because, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the uh, the Bearcats have themselves a huge ad. Uh, next up, though, tackles for loss. A little different. We're going to run by this one real fast. You don't have to kind of go into depth on this. It was more kind of a, are you going to have specialist as a, you know, sack artist, if you will, and then a tackle for loss leader, kind of like Elijah Ponder, where you're, you're now looking at a Jabari Taylor or you're looking at, a player like Malik Van, who's in the backfield a lot for some tackles for loss. Just real fast, Aaron, are you sticking with the same as as sacks, or are you kind of going a little different? Just tackle for loss. Um, yeah, I think I'll stick. I'll stick with Juwan Briggs. Same reasons as the sacks. Mm -hmm. Chad Jabari. Why do we have to go real quick? Okay. We're doing superlatives, right? You're making me do this. <laughs> hey, man, you wanted to do. It. All right, who you got, Chad? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing things up. Like I'm trying to spread around the wealth. I'm trying to spread around the love here. I like I'm Malik. Yeah. I think Malik has a really good final season on campus. Mm -hmm. Um, and, he and stays does, healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And does a good job getting up the field, uh, and, and making some plays in the backfield. That's always been something that he has, uh, he's done a good job of. Uh, so I'll go Malik and, and say he leads in tackles for loss. Okay, I enjoy it. Um, I'm going to go with Ivan Pace. I uh, just think that kind of similar things we were saying about Deshaun Pace, he just has an absolute nose for the football. Uh, last year when he was the considered the MAC Defensive Player of the Year uh, by Pro Football Focus, he not only had 125 tackles, but 
13 of those were for a loss, which is a uh, very strong number. It would have given him the lead on the team last year for the Bearcats. Curtis Brooks, he again had 12 and a half last year. So um, I, I think if Pace is in there, he's flying around. I, I don't think they're really beating the bush on him. I think they're telling him just go out there, find ball, and, and destroy the one carrying it. So wouldn't it wouldn't it hurt if you keep crashing your nose into the football? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If they both have a nose for the well, football, it seems I mean, like they it lead to a lot of broken noses. Technically, you've got a face mask on, so not you're, over you know, your nose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do you think <laughs> you think the ball's going to get through? I don't know. Maybe I, this is this is what 2022. Where uh, face masks and, and helmets they're they're next level these days. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Like you said, spreading the wealth. Got to go Ivan Pace for something. He uh, he is he's a beast. I'm excited to see kind of how he's used, and, and I think he could be someone that just, you know, when you're out there, go for it, and, and we'll cover you in the back if, if we need to. But a lot of tackles for loss for Ivan Pace. Interceptions. This is where things get interesting. Sure does. Um, last season, it was led by Deshaun Pace. There have been a few articles out there saying that Pace is going to be one of the leaders in the country in interceptions. Uh, he was followed by Arquan Bush and, and, of course, Sauce. The year before that was Jarrell White. So back-to-back -back years with the sniper slash dollar leading the team in interceptions. Sauce was second that year. And then, of course, in the first taste, the, the, the turnover captain, the turnover king, Javon Hicks, he led the team with five interceptions. Kobe Bryant was second. Guys, this is a uh, it's an interesting one. Aaron, are you going defensive backs? You going linebackers? Interceptions leaders for the 2022 Bearcats. I'm gonna go with the safe pick on this one and go with Deshaun Pace, um, largely because I have, we we have no idea what the secondary is going to look like, right. and if Week One secondary is going to be the same as Week Seven secondary. Okay. Um, that said, we, we know we have in a resource such as Deshaun Pace. Um, he, he is a machine, and I, I venture to find anybody else, at least in conference, uh, if not in the nation, better at coverage from that linebacker position than he is. Mm -hmm. Chad, who you got? Oh, boy. I'm going to go... I'm torn between Hicks and Bush. Uh, I'm going to go Arquan Bush on a on a gut feeling. I think he's going to to be in a position to have that breakout year that was never really possible for him with Kobe and Sauce. Mm -hmm. Also at cornerback, I mean, you had the number one cornerback in the country and the guy that won the award for the best cornerback in the country. And I think Bush has been kind of hiding, not hiding in plain sight, but like, you know, it, it, he, he's going to, he's going to be kind of the guy in that secondary this year. Um, and, and much like Van, much like Malik, as long as he stays healthy, uh, I think he's primed for a huge season. So I'll go Arquan Bush. It's a good pick. Um, I mean, Thanks. Bush is, I mean, <laughs> It's kind of one of those things as well where you think probably on the scouting report early in the year, they're going to say out is Kobe Bryant, out is Sauce Gardner. Let's go ahead and attack the outside a little bit, which could lead to some teams challenging a throw where it would have been you know, easily intercepted and then not, not one that they would have thrown last season or the season before with those corners out there. Now Arquan Bush is out there and he's the, uh, the beneficiary of these passes that are ill-advised and now he's the one picking them off but um i'm gonna go hicks i think uh i think kind of the same way that we just mentioned that i think teams are going to challenge them vertically a little bit more and i you saw where hicks was then able to take advantage a lot of his five interceptions from you know that 2019 season were, were kind of these jump balls that were yeah. you know, he heavy defensive pressure on the line and he's able to track it down and, and come up with an interception. I think that 
they're going to try and go with the heavy defensive pressure on on passing downs. Leads to a couple more jump balls with with Hicks kind of playing center field and and coming up with with enough interceptions to lead the team. Uh, Deshaun Pace is the juicy pick though. Uh, I I think he's just just that safety that you know moved to hey, his position. I mean, he's got a nose way. for the football. What can you do? I, I, I was avoiding that. I was avoiding that phrase, but you were, <laughs> you were there for me. Um, but yeah, so Pace is Pace is the sexy pick, but I'm going to go with uh, with Hicks because I think you know he's he's done it before. Turnover King a, a few seasons ago. Now he is the guy, and if if he has a big season, it's the NFL is the next step for him, and I think he can do that by by putting up some big numbers. So Hicks, Bush, and Pace, all all good picks. All really good picks. Um, now this is an interesting one. How who is going to lead the team in snaps at the boundary corner position? Obviously, this is something that Aaron was really mentioning as his top storyline to watch. It'll be probably one of the top storylines all throughout camp and even probably all throughout the season as well, because there are a plethora of picks to lead the team. And snaps at the boundary corner. Chad, I'm going to give you a little curveball. Who, who are you going with? You're up first on this one. Man, this is hard. Hard. It's hard. It's hard. It is. Poppy Huggins hard. In, we haven't made that joke in a couple weeks. It's hard. Yeah. It's a good, good time to bring it up. Um, I'll let Aaron have his pick. I know who okay. his pick is. There we go. The staff is going to give Jaquan Shepard every opportunity to win this job from my conversation with Fick today. He's backed up uh, Sauce for two years. You know, that doesn't mean that the job is given to you. Right. But I think they are going to give him every opportunity to show that, you know, the apprentice is now the master and, and now he gets to mentor JQ. Um I still think Aaron's probably going to be right. But I, I will go with the guy that is expected as of today, talking to Fick, that's expected to get, like, the first snap right. at, at camp, and that's Jaquan Shepard. Love it. But Aaron, I think Aaron's going to be right. Aaron, the floor is yours, baby. I think that by week four? Indiana, Four. Indiana, the Hoosiers. I think it might be a job belonging to JQ Hardaway. And I think that he will never look back. Uh, the kid is massively talented. He's physically sauce. Like from, from last year, he looks like he has sauces build already as a freshman. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to go through some of the, growing pains, if you will, right. that, that Brady had to go through with sauce. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that this is going to be a, uh, a season to remember for young JQ Hardaway. And I think that this is going to be where he makes his name. Um, and and I, I would be shocked if he is not the player, barring injury, um, leading the team in uh, snaps at the boundary position. You know, I uh, obviously you guys are picking the correct answers, um, but I'm I'm all about the iron sharpens iron. What if what if Shepard comes out and just dominates and just shows, hey, this is my spot, and then it's a little bit more of a 50-50 midway through the year, but Shepard at the end edges out total snaps. We'll see. Um, I think it'll be more of like a uh, rotational basis until they come up with. The, the best possible option, and if that's midway through the AAC calendar, maybe Shepard added up enough snaps up to that point, but we'll see. Uh, I think, obviously, everyone's excited to see what JQ can do because he's a special talent, and you look at the guy, and he is he is huge. <laughs> he is built very big. I I mean, you, that picture with, with JQ, and he was with uh, Kaylee Carroll and um, Ken Willis. I don't know if you guys saw that picture on Twitter. That, that one of them posted, but man, those are three guys that are that are filling out really well. JQ is filling out big time. Ken Willis looks like he's going to be producing really soon. He looks like an animal. So um, I think it'll be a it'll be a close thing, but I think JQ might be the 
the winner in that one. Uh, snaps as far as the safety opposite Javon Hicks. Obviously, Hicks will be the leader of the clubhouse opposite of him. Who will be the snap leader in that one? Is it kind of a uh, clear winner? Is it something that you think track it as it goes on? Aaron, we'll, we'll throw it back down to you. This is gonna. This one I think might be even harder than, than uh, than the last one, at least for me. Um, but I, I think it's gonna end up being Byron Threats, and uh, he's shown he's shown a lot. Oh, even last year, as he was first one off the bench, uh, anytime anything was going on with where somebody needed a breather or an injury or whatever the case may be. Um, but I think that he's got a, a huge opportunity to really step up through camp higher ground and show who he is, what he's made of, and that his height is not going to um, be a, a knock on him as he can, he can really hit. He can. Can, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. Uh, safety opposite Hicks. Most. Snaps. Yeah. I, I think threats. I think threats. Uh, Dingle will be right there. Dingle's J- Jacob Dingle will make this a uh, a competition. <coughs> Adonis. No, that's his brother. Oh, his other brother. Yeah. The other I, there's... Jack. Oh, if this Jack. is McCauley. Yeah. Man, if if, if if Jack had the speed at the at the safety position, oh man, that'd be a scary. Hi, day. Dave. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Dave, hey buddy, yeah, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go threats, uh, but look out, man, our Morion, our Morion's kind of looming, and Isaiah Cox is looming as well. So you know, there, there, there could be, and, and you know, this is the case in a couple of different places. There could be a little bit more rotation than we saw last year. That's something people have to to get in their brain. Like, you know, the thing about last year that was so different is that you were, especially defensively, so good at so many spots that rotation wasn't really like something you needed to rely on Mm -hmm. because you wanted to keep your best players on the field as often as you could keep them on the field. Defensive line's different just because you need to, to get those guys in and out. But that back seven, man, there wasn't – outside of Pace and Van Fossen essentially being like one person, the other, <laughs> you know, eight guys were – or the other seven guys were on the field a whole lot last year. That might not be the case this year. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it's threats until he does like – make so many mistakes where you have to make a change. I think, uh, I think he's too much of a, of a playmaker and one that's going to be a head hunter and will, will not be afraid to come up and, and, and hit. So. And hopefully as a starter, we can start getting him on camera because he's got some personality. Absolutely. So is that's that the only one we've all agreed on right now? I think so. I think so. Pretty fun. Uh, this next one's kind of interesting. Uh, the last, However many out seasons, last four seasons, I, I I went back and looked. There was at least one defensive touchdown. Um, last year it was it was Kobe Bryant, and, and I'm taking off the special teams touchdowns or the the blocked you know field oh, goal taken back for a touchdown. Right, exactly. Or the touchdown that Darian Beavers had called back. Right, exactly. That one didn't count. So I'm so we're not counting that one. Last year it was Kobe Bryant with the pick six. That one didn't count. That, that was terrible. Uh, Kobe Bryant with pick six year before. Drew White had a pick six. Um, year before that was the the sauce year, the saucy year. Two two pick sixes for him. Um, year before that, Arquan had one. I, I also think that the season that Sauce Wiggins. had two. Uh, yeah, the year before that, Wiggins had one. Yeah, the the year that SMU. Sauce had two, uh, Perry Young had one off, off that tip ball against at Houston. It was yeah. a mon- monster pick six. Um, who do you who are you guys picking that will will either have a pick six or maybe they they do get an interception return for a touchdown? I I know who my pick is pretty easily. Aaron, are you are you calling for history to repeat itself? I'm I'm doubling down on JK. Okay. Yeah, okay. doubling down. Like 
he he has his breakout moment on a pick six against Indiana. Oh, well, he would have to already be. If if I said he's going to be starting by week four, he would have to have it in week three, right? At at Paul Brown Stadium against Miami. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, not that you know, it, 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 he could have risen to starter, but they're still rolling so between for him one, and right. Shep, you know, until he snatches the job with the pick six. Yeah, packed house. Indiana just, comes in. I don't think. First off, there's not tape on the guy from ex, except high school, which we all know how much you change between high school and college. Um, I, I I don't think you can bet against him. And I think that, yeah, I'm doubling down. Your man crush is very real. Very real. Very real. <laughs> Chad, who you got? Good kid. <laughs> I'll go. So it's tough with Hicks because He's so usually when back, he got right? his, he was, he was deep, like yeah. really deep. I'm gonna go pace. Pace was so close a couple times, man. You're and, and taking the words out of my mouth. But and when you get those pick sixes like he gets that are really unexpected in the middle of the field, like dropping into middle coverage, things like mm-hmm. that. Really, you got the offensive line in front of you, and that's yeah. about it. Right. Um, I, I'll go Deshaun. Yeah. You mentioned two last year. One was at IU, kind of put the put coffin nails, if you will. Shout out Dan Hort. He he had the, uh, the the one where he stepped in, intercepted it, so close to scoring. I thought he, I thought he did score at first. Stepped out yeah. of bounds at about the the three yard line, uh, and then of course against Notre Dame at Notre Dame was was the other one. Maje puts a big hit on. Uh, what was the the. The, the running quarterback that Notre Dame had. I literally just watched the game the other day. But uh, he almost took it back in that he one as well. He pronounces his name wrong, so I always screw it up. Okay. Fair. And so, um, Buckner. Yeah. Something and that like is that. not how his name is spelled. Right. It's like Bush, Bushner. But B-U-C-H-N-E-R. anyway. B-U-C-H-N-E-R. That is not Buckner. I don't care what you say. <laughs> yes. Very good. Uh Pace is my pick. He made electric plays, scored touchdowns off of punt returns. He's he's been in this position before, um, back to his high school days where he was Mr. Everything. Uh, so I think he he gets one in the end zone this year. Uh, shout out also Bush. Arquan had one his true freshman year, I believe, against I'm going to say Tulane maybe, where he was able to get on the field in that one. Had a pick six, so or it was ECU, one of the two. Anyway, last superlative. This is uh, special teams now. I'm going to say four names, and you guys give me the most important out of those four on the season. Fletcher, the the rake, Mr. Rake, Ryan Coe, Ryan Montgomery, Trey Tucker. I'll go Coe. I will also go Coe. It's such a – it's so needed. You know right. what I mean? It affects your offense. It affects the defense. It affects everything that you do on a drive. Well, I, I hear that. I do. But the, the, the field goal kicking last year was horrible, horrendous, right? And they, they still were able to, to win, and they still were able to overcome the difficulties that, that it brought uh, – I think Ryan, Ryan Montgomery is highly, highly underrated. Having a punt returner that can just pick up eight yards here, 15 yards there, catch it, you know, at the bounce house a few seasons ago. Everyone's forgot about that by now. He's now one of the uh, favorites to be an All-American at that position. But I'm going to say Mason Fletcher, honestly. Um, just kind of thinking back to where hit, just field position will be so important a lot of the season, I think. Because you'll have the defense, and at times, if, if the offense isn't clicking, it takes a little bit for them to figure out what to do. Field position is going to be highly important. I mean, if Ryan Coe can come out and he's knocking 55 yarders in like it's nothing, the answer is easily Ryan Coe. Uh, but I, I think it's going to be important for, for Mason Fletcher to be highly, highly productive to really put Cincinnati in, in a great position in numerous games. Uh but yeah, I mean, points are. Yeah, points. I, I guess here's the only the only thing I would like argue there. It, it would 
and I, I said this to, to Fick today. I know people are getting tired of me saying that. Um, I don't think so. We talked all last offseason about how one of the major storylines was not having Jimmy. Right. And how much of a drop-off just naturally there was going to be in not having Jimmy. And you know what? I don't think there was a single point in time last year where we thought, damn, would have been nice to have Jimmy for that one. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah, No, I agree. Even if there was maybe a, a, a punt that didn't go the way you wanted it to, I don't think there was ever a game where you looked back and said, "No, damn. Right. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy wasn't perfect. He was close by the end, but like sure. – he wasn't, you know, a thousand percent. He had a bad, you know, or a, a not great kick every now and then. Um, I just yeah. think, man, Mason Mason did such a good job. It's so hard to follow like an all time great at your position, right? And and once the season started, did we mention Jimmy at all? Really? Like that's a huge tip of the cap to Mason Fletcher, right? I agree, I, but it, it was also kind of the situation when things were going really well offensively, and and Jimmy wasn't really needed too too much. You know that that first year when when it was you know Dez kind of you know as as a retro freshman, I feel like that was when when Jimmy had his his best season, his best you know all conference season, kind of great yardage, pitting people inside of the twenty. This, that, and the other. I don't know. Maybe it, I think Co is the right answer. I was kind of just trying to trying to be the uh, devil's advocate a tiny bit, but I mean, if, if if Mason can flip field position at all times and, and give the advantage to the team that way, then I think it's uh, be more valuable than you know the amount of missed field. Goal. Man, I watching back those games last year, like against Notre Dame, two missed field goals in the second half. I mean that that could have been. Nice, perfect. Yeah, Sayonara. a lot earlier. Sayonara, my my bad. But Sayonara. Sayonara. So that yeah. sounds like a like a Marinara. Japanese like fish sauce. Uh, yeah. Sayonara. Hey, yeah. you got you got you got any of that Sayonara? I was saying more of like a Italian way of like you got some Sayonara, like marinara, Sayonara. It's actually how Brad Pitt pronounced it in it's, Inglorious it's, Bastards. Is that, yeah. is that marinara <laughs> with with cyanide in it? Yeah. What's Sayonara? In your name again, sir? Dominic the Coco. Yes, one more time. Dominic the Coco. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and, and plus Trey Tucker. Aaron, I was hoping that you were going to say Trey Tucker just, just, to, well, just to keep things flowing. I don't think you can say a punt returner or a kick returner on special teams just because I think that unless they're Marty Gilliard, even then, like, oh no, he, not he, even then. He he was electric, but you like he changed games. He that, won games. That, that Pittsburgh game. Absolutely I mean, electric. I'm I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm saying if your kicker or your punter goes down, I don't know that you have a backup option. Like, not not great. The the drop off would be much greater. I think going from a a kicker of Ryan Coe's nature or right. even a punter from what Mason Fletcher showed us to what you have backing them up. Yeah, I agree. Because Tyler Scott's right there, and I'm sure, I'm sure Trey and Tyler can also do a good job of turning punts if they needed. Will Pauling as well. Yeah, the list goes on. But yeah, I mean, Ryan Montgomery's getting shouts as an All-American at at the punt returner, so um, deserves a mention at the very least. But I think that's the defense spoilers wrapped up in one. Anything else closing wise as camp is right around the corner, guys? I, don't, I mean, we've we talked about on the BBP just there's so and we kind of danced around this tonight. There's so many storylines. Yep. Some that we know, some that will emerge. Mm -hmm. Like it's defense is is just as intriguing as offense this year, and right. it's a coin flip as to which you're going to be more dialed in on on any given play this year in particular, especially compared to last year. Yeah, Chad, did you get anything? Fair. Chad, I don't want to hear. I, I, I 
don't give us everything Luke said, but after talking to Luke, did you develop even more questions than you originally had going into the interview? No, I mean, I, I had a pretty good grasp on, on every, just for, you know, being at every spring practice. Yeah. Um, you know, being around as much as I am, you know, you, you get a pretty good feel for things. Um, that's not to say like, you know, it was, it was, uh, boring by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it was, you know, the the standard type of conversation that we have every year. So I, I had an idea of what was coming. Right. Um, but I think for the fan base to like get to hear in his words what he's thinking, where things are headed, uh, it's always very interesting. I think in that setting, because I think he um obviously he appreciates having you know it, it it's it's difficult for the national media to be as dialed in as somebody that's boots on the ground every day. Right. Um so I think like when he talks to me and Justin, you get a, a different loop yeah. because he appreciates, you know, how much time we spend on this and how dialed in we are on what the roster looks like, what the roster needs are, where things yeah. are headed. Um, so I think it's a really good, I think it ended up being 35 minutes or so mm-hmm. um, that, like I said, will come out. I, I just now released part one. It is up on the YouTube channel. So when we're done here, You'll be able to uh, to go check that out as uh, part of your your camp ramp up. Yeah. So uh, we're breaking it into parts, and then I think at the end I'll go back and release the one long video for anybody that wants to just sit down and consume the whole thing consecutively. Well, the last uh, the last preview article will come out. Tomorrow night, early uh, early Wednesday, DBs. So that means, guys, it's it's wrapped up, man. The season's here. Yeah, we're 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 on it. Like it's again Wednesday at Nippert, Friday at Higher Ground, and it is it is nonstop camp content. You know, straight yeah. through for the next three weeks. It's right there, right there. Well, even even Aaron's going to be back in town for a little bit, maybe. Oh. Maybe find his way out to higher ground a couple times. Oh, Aaron! I'll be in. I'll be in Fisher's most of the week. Really? What you doing up there? My sister. Okay, where did she that at Fisher's? That didn't come out well. Yeah, no, didn't. Phrasing. No. Um, I'll be visiting my sister and her family. What are you okay. doing up there, my okay. sister? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jesus. come on, bro. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you made it weird, man. You made it real weird. I didn't make it weird. You, you made, made it weird. weird. No, you made it weird. Visiting and, uh, my sister was the answer to what are you weird. doing there? She hasn't, she hasn't got to, to meet the baby yet. So baby's coming, right? Yeah, we're oh. we're, take, we're taking. Well, I I haven't got to meet meet her either. Yeah, well, we'll be we'll be around. Okay. Ed, we've been producing camp ramp up content for a week and a half now, Brent. Two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I've spent. We're almost of, done with the camp ramp ramp up content. <laughs> hours upon hours, Ed. Go back and look at the. At the he article. prefers his ramps like this as opposed to <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears in those. Ed. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> He That's prefers his ramp up to be like the upper deck at Assembly Hall, bro. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's uh that that's a tough fall right there. You roll up and you fall back down. I honestly, when I the, the when I've been up there, you like you do feel like if you if you even lean an inch or two forward, yeah, you're just gonna go. I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a Kevin Jones West Virginia jersey at the IU Purdue game. I fall down six rows. <sighs> go back and sit kicked. down in my seat. <laughs> no shoes on. It was bad. It was very bad. But uh, uh... heck of a day. I'll 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 say that. I'll say that. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and timestamp that. Football is here. Football is back. Oh, the smell, the taste. And and you know, Aaron, I liked what you said as well. It's 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 such a breath of fresh air going on Twitter and just seeing constant, constant. Oh, hello. Interesting. Whoa. 
Ho ho. Good 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 shut down there. Uh, control. That was that was crazy. Uh whoa, it's why, back. Why is it still here? Get out of here. Maybe, maybe we check it out. Anyway, uh aside from that, uh yeah. Love uh, chat XYZ. Yeah. I blocked them. Forget I hit that five minutes well, stuff. It, the other one wouldn't disappear when I tried to reblock. Just, just, just hit, <laughs> this, hit the DMs afterwards. Hit the DMs afterwards, and uh, we'll go from there. But anyway, um, yeah, hopping on Twitter, seeing all the NFL updates is awesome, uh, and I, I can't wait to continue to see those. And I mean, shoot, it's just confirming what we knew, man. Yeah, special group, special group. Yeah. That's that's all you can say. Like that was just a like something. Maybe we see it again, right? At, at some point in time, the volume though. But not even just the volume, but like what it meant, like what how they saved the program. So mm-hmm. many, like you know, yeah, so many accolades and like. It just it, it meant so much to the fan base, to the program. Probably saved UC from from purgatory because it helped yeah. get them in the Big Twelve. Like yeah, th- that that group, man, it, it, it has meant more than than just about anybody in the history of the program. I think yeah. the coolest thing is is the fact that they know that though. Like they know what they did here was just changed the entire trajectory forever yeah dave smoke For sure dave, sammy anderson i like it um but anyway yeah sammy i love it I, anyway so for me i was i was at a bar on this past saturday and uh up on the screen is is none other than zach calaro slinging some touchdowns of in the course. cfl and I, I turned to one of my friends i'm like remember calaros and oh man I, we had a crazy party night at his frat when when Zach had that 75 yard run at USF turned into a wild night. Uh, but that was kind of a catalyst for it all uh, that started it off. And so a lot of people remember Zach kind of from that. And, uh, and he was like, he's like, what? he's got to be one of the, one of the main football players that are having success at the next level. Right. And I was like, I was like, just wait, just wait, just wait. So uh, thanks to Tonk for the, uh, the $5 Tonk stamp. We appreciate that, sir. Yeah. Tonk stamp. Out. Tonky tonk stamp, honky tonk stamp. Now up next, guys. I'm gonna ask, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask Aaron. Uh, do you like watching the spelling bee on ESPN whenever it's on there? Are you a fan of the spelling bee? Can I have that in a sentence? Oh, oh, very good. You are a uh, it's the origin seasoned, seasoned veteran. I'm gonna it's give you a. Uh, I'm gonna give you a word, Aaron. But n- no, I don't. I don't love watching it. Like, I think it's awful. It's watch. good. It's good background music. It's like jazz or or elevator music, you know. Sure. Good, to, good to kind of just have on the background in a hot summer day. But uh, spelling bee, Aaron. I'm I'm going to give you a a word, and I want you to spell it for me. And it's a word that we say a lot. Hopefully, you can get it. Cincinnati. I'm going to repeat it. Cincinnati. Well, I've got half of it on my shirt here. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. The the natty. Kind of uh, cheating. C I N C I N N A T I. I think oh. I got it. I think I got it. You did it. There's no ding. Yay. You got it. There's no ding. You got it. Now, how hard was that? There's uh for the people that, that run the Fox Sports stuff and the Titus and Tate account and uh, a lot of other things, it's, it's very difficult. Man, it's I'm, very difficult. I'm seeing it all over offers to recruits from Cincinnati. I, I saw one that I don't even know how to pronounce the way that it was spelled. It was something along the lines of Cincinnati, something along those lines. Uh, but, man, they struggle to spell the word Cincinnati. And I bring that up because, like you said, Tyus and Tate, they had the bracket reveal for the Maui Invitational. Uh, kind of was already out, but they did a good job, kind of just you know put, putting it all on a in the video format. They're kind of all over that. So the Maui Invitational field is set.
first game is Arizona Wildcats, 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which means it'll Go probably be, be tipping one. off at about midnight. Initial thoughts on the meeting with the Arizona Wildcats, guys. I know it's obviously basketball season's far, far away, and this is going to be a game that's a little bit further into the season than right off the bat, but still pretty exciting to have that game. And then, of course, you win there. You play the winner of San Diego State and Ohio State. So, guys, it, it's good to start to get some concrete basketball news as well. Yeah. Um, I, I don't care who the matchup is in that tournament out there. I think that Cincinnati with the team that they put together, they're going to have a puncher's chance in any game out there. That's a monster of a tournament. Yes. It is. But the fact of the matter is Arizona lost a lot from this past season. They did, and it's going to be early, so you're going to have a chance. If you're going to swing on them, you're going to right. want to swing on them when Cincinnati's getting the opportunity to, for sure. But that's – I was a damn good team last year, and Tommy Lloyd's a hell of a coach. He well, is. Even if you go back to last year when they upset Illinois and almost upset Arkansas, um, I mean, there was just – that's when you, want to, when you want a team is right at the beginning of the season when everyone's still trying to figure it all out. Uh, but Cincinnati's bringing a lot of pieces back, um, and they've – added... They're old. Like, what they brought back, what they're bringing in – any way you slice it, this is an old team. Like, you know, that what's the what's always the joke? Like BYU looked at your roster and goes, damn, those guys are old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I think COVID guys... years, fifth years, six years, like you got you got a lot of experience at the top of this roster. Now you have some some talent below that, of course, but man. There's a lot of dudes that have played a lot of basketball that Wes Miller is going to have at his disposal. Let me see here. I'm going to I'm going to send something to Aaron real quick to throw up as well um, because it is kind of along the lines of what we're talking as far as the basketball team goes. And I always love these videos. They tend to get me pretty pretty hype. If I can find our group chat of what the Smith League. Yes, because that's what that that's what we've got right now. Um, I just sent it to the group. And so, obviously, at, if you were on social media at all over the weekend, you saw a, a pretty in the cool meantime, game. In the meantime. Yes, in the meantime. Which got Thunder, Thunder Bucks. Let me just say, before they figure out UC. Um, ha ha. Ha 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 ha. The reason that was a thing last year is because that roster didn't have the versatility, the length. They didn't have multiple answers. Right. A basketball season is always this gets figured out, and then this adjustment is made, mm -hmm. and then this gets figured out. Excuse me. And then this adjustment gets made. Well, at some point in time last year, because of the roster that was in place, it was this gets figured out, and oh, shit. We don't have any more adjustments left <laughs> we've we've exhausted all this <laughs> like that's why you go out and you get the length and the athleticism and and you change the roster in the way that west miller changed the roster because at, at, at any given moment last year that team was going to get figured out and yeah. they were able to you know they got figured out after the arkansas game and they were able to kind of reshuffle and and get back on track they had their best stretch that what five or six games right there early in the aac yep they got them to about the halfway point and then the next adjustment was made right around memphis and they never had an answer and that's why it sucks to play with a bad roster because once they ultimately figure out okay they're not a great rebounding team Okay, they're not a great half-court offense team. Okay, if you make them one-dimensional with DeJulius, they don't have enough firepower to beat you. And that really was the final nail in the coffin Right. when, when teams just said, it's not going to be Dave. You know, And I still contend the worst thing that happened to UC last year was that, what, three or four-game stretch when where Dave he was putting off. up 20 a night. Yeah. Because then it became very obvious, take that away, 
and and you're gonna more often than not take down that version of the Cincinnati Bearcats. So I know you were making a funny, but there was reasons for that. Like yeah. there was reasons that was the talking point last year. Right. Yeah, it was what take take away DDJ and then get out on Davenport on the outside. And then yeah. after that. There's someone else to beat you. Well, well, I mean, if once once you did the takeaway DDJ part, like Davenport, it was just a matter of okay, look, like sometimes he took terrible shots and hit six threes. Sometimes he took good shots and hit two. Like it was just a matter of is he going right. to be unconscious, Jeremiah Davenport? Right. Uh, and if if he's not, then then they don't have one or two, and. Asking that team to beat you three through six or seven is uh, that was that was not good. Was well, not well, good. Speaking of unconscious Jeremiah Davenport, uh, he kind of was, was was in his bag a little bit at the Smith League. Yeah, sure, Chad. I know it's the Smith League, but it's what we've got right now. And there's actually a player in this video, not named Jeremiah Davenport, that had me even more excited. Uh, and I think if you guys have seen it before, then I think you know who I'm talking about. But obviously the Smith League this past weekend, is some pretty exciting matchups. There's Jarrett Hensley, Jeremiah Davenport, and here comes Tari Eason. They're playing against a team that had Mama Dudiara, Rayvon Griffith, Coriante DeBerry. So Bearcats galore. But something that we saw at the JD last season, obviously, was his shooting ability. Um, and this is a glorified pickup game. So is he's attacking the rack. He's playing with confidence. If he just has that different step where he can have be a bit of a distributor as well, or at least just, just a lob finder as he's showing these very confident clips. And I'm excited for what Jeremiah Davenport is going to bring to the table tomorrow, the next season. But for me, it's Jared Hensley. He looks like he has some added confidence in himself as well. Some, some strength, some some bounce, some I don't know. He's he's heading out to the the uh, what are we calling that? The U.S. tour. If it, it, it's a U.S. East Coast, or, U.S. East Coast, right? So yeah, um, yeah. They're going to Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got today and tomorrow in New York, I think. A little little training camp, a little, little training camp, and then they fly out. They play games the fifth through the ninth. Uh, just a really like I'm sure it's going to help him some basketball wise, right? But more than anything, just a really cool life experience to to get on the road and uh, be around a bunch of college guys and and spend a, a you know ten days or whatever uh, playing ball. And in, invaluable exper invaluable experiences, you said. So I'm excited to see what Hensley's game is, and it just speaks to the the depth that this team is developing. And when a player like Jared Hensley is just showing a knack to, I mean, he's, he's looking as athletic in tone as, as I can remember him looking, he looks like he's going to have a big impact. And you throw him with all these long athletic players that are now on the roster with the Daniel skillings and the Josh Reed as true freshman Landers and Ollie transferring in Jeremiah Davenport, I, John Newman, I, the, the list goes on and on. I've never been more excited about the team than I have been over the last few weeks past months but uh just constantly seeing all of this i you know, sure it's glorified pickup games but seeing them actually having a big impact in these glorified pickup games and, and making flashy plays is what really is drawing my attention and uh just thought i'd i'd sprinkle that a little bit and uh go from there but hensley i'm excited to see if he tries to take on a big role on this tour i don't know how they're gonna do rotations or anything of that sort they're gonna try and get everyone minutes or different games to set in the other, or if their whole mentality is to win basketball games, I'm not sure. So um, we'll see as his trip continues on this summer. Huh? Anything else basketball wise guys or. No, I mean, we're, you know, Isaiah Collier's uh, trip to Michigan is over. Yep. Uh, the, the, the people in and around Michigan feel great about it because that's what happens when Isaiah Collier visits your school. He leaves and your school feels great about how the visit went. Right. Um, I, I still don't think anybody knows anything. Yep. Um, I am working to get in touch with them. I think they started school 
and it, this it's insane. They started school today. Well, insane. In Atlanta, they started school today. When does Kelsey Their go back? The seventeenth. Wow. I told you, my sister starts. Her kids start Wednesday. I know it's insane. Like I, August is still. I guess they, they they're on the Bearcat Journal schedule. Look, Bearcat Journal did the fickle interview today. School starts today. The summer's over, kids. <laughs> summer's over. It's football season. Yeah. Time we're, to we're get learned. Back in school today. Get a little like, learning. You know that's 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 the measuring stick now for when summer's over and and school starts. Is uh, right. uh, Brent Brendel did Brendel did the fickle interview. We're gonna need all the kids back. <laughs> Bring them on back. Let's go. Non Zoom. <laughs> Need you in person. <laughs> in person, yeah. If Chad can go to Luke's office and do the interview, then you know we're going to need you guys. We need you guys right here, right now, to uh, to get this show on the road. Lock and load. Lock so and load. yeah, um, I, I'm working on it. Uh, I, was, I was in communication with uh, with some people close to him today, and and we're trying to get that ironed out. I, I'll get it done. I'll track it down at some point in time uh, this week. Um, but that's that's kind of what is uh holding things up. That and I we had a it, it, it wasn't a great day right. here at the Brendo household. So <laughs> I've, I've been working on things, but maybe not as uh diligently as every other typical day, as understood. Um, yeah, it and, happens, whatever, we'll be good. Yeah, uh, but. As always, it's always funny seeing on the on the board and whatnot. Uh, finishes up Miss, Michigan visit. Now every little small crumb on social media or this, right. that, and the other has their. Oh, look base. who he followed! Look yeah, who he followed! Their fan base all of a sudden is like, "Yep, yeah, we got this one locked down." Those eyeball emojis are for us. And then you know they they all of a sudden are saying UFC is not really in the mix much anymore. This, that, and the other. Arnton Page had a visit to IU. And Chad, I don't know if you heard, but supposedly that went really well as well. So it, it, <laughs> if uh, if you get a, a player on your campus for an official visit and they say it didn't go okay. well. Yeah, shoot yourself. Like, quit coaching <laughs> basketball. He, okay. This is an official visit. You show up. They roll out the red carpet. They kiss your ass. They take you and your family to dinner. You go out and party with the team. That's why I think the visits right now are dumb because most of these got most, you know, teams have gone home, right? Like you're bringing kids in for an official visit now uh, when there's no students on campus, there's no activities going on and your team has left. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe but, you want to them out. <laughs> yeah. But like you, you know, then you go out with the team that night, you hang out, you go to parties. Right. The next day they do the whole like, Here's the student advisor. Here's the compliance people. Here's the academic people. Here's, you know, if you have a major that you want, you meet them. Uh, they might walk you by the AD's office to say hello. Then you go out for dinner again at a really expensive place, typically. You can go get yourself like a $75 steak, uh, you know, whatever you want. Um, and then you wake up on Sunday morning, you have, you, then you go out and you party with the team again on Saturday night or on the second night, then you wake up on the third morning, you have breakfast, they try to get you to commit and then you get on a plane and you go home. What about that could go wrong? It should always be a, an excellent experience. Everybody should always have, now there are occasionally like a kid just won't class or like won't vibe with the head coach but if you've gotten to the official visit point and you haven't figured that out with the kid what the hell have you been doing right like the, then your coach clearly hasn't been talking to the kid <laughs> like it just doesn't i i don't know man like i i always get a kick out of like how to go it 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 went great it went great uh you just saying that to appease people like right i don't know whatever the uh, the party unless part. the kid committed on his visit, and then you can say you feel great, but then you know somebody comes along and offers them a hundred thousand uh, dollars to go to their school, and then that commitment goes out the window anyway. Yeah. Elsewhere, Xavier Brooks uh, 
Michigan gone. State. I, I think I think that's the worst. And I, I've Xavier said Booker. this Booker, my bad. Xavier Booker. I said, I said I, I've said this to people close to that recruitment. And I, I think Izzo's a great coach. A, a legendary coach, one of the best coaches of all time. Mm-hmm. But he takes guys like Xavier Booker and tries to make them traditional back to the basket big men. And if you have seen Xavier Booker play, it's not who he is. Jesus, man. What? Oh, oh. Oh. I mean, they did they really wait like the five minute thing that you put on them? I, they were already blocked. I don't I don't know what's going on. They came in heavy. They came in heavy right there. But Jeez. uh but yeah, Chad, and and supposedly the, the game that Izzo saw him in person. I know a lot of this is like AAU is where you get your evaluations nowadays, but sure. The the high school game he, he came and saw was against Arsenal Tech. He didn't play much. And it was zero points. I, you know, so I, I'm sure it's kind of a thing where Izzo had an inside track for a while, and I think yeah. Michigan State was the odds-on favorite even before all these other schools started funneling back in. Turns out at the end, it was always Michigan State, or at least kind there, of. The there was out. one school that I heard had a kind of a, a backdoor, like outside chance, right? Notre Dame. Yep. I heard it vibe really well with Mike Bray. And that would have been that would have been a, a coach that would use Xavier Booker the way Xavier Booker right. needed to be used. He would have been fun to watch play for Mike Bray. He would have. And and interesting because there's a picture out there where, with both Izzo and Bray visiting Cathedral High School, uh, one of the greatest high schools in the uh, in the world. Uh, my my <laughs> Alma mater as well. Uh, but uh, aside from that, they were there at the same time. So uh, definitely highly in the mix of things. And then, so he's gone. Cross him off the list. Chad, you dropped your uh, hot board guards last night. Anything more you want to expound upon on that? Or is it kind of just head to the board, read it, guys, and see how it goes? I mean, it's, it, it's nothing new. Like, this right. is, you know. They are all in on Isaiah Collier. And right. at guard, that's going to affect the entire board until you get a decision from Isaiah Collier. Right. Um, but it's the end of the summer. I wanted to give everybody an update. And that's that's where things are at. It, it's on the board if you want further details. Do you, do you get a vibe from the fan base that they're irritated at all that they're all in on on – Collier and because they're all in on Collier they've missed out on other people or do you think that most understand like hey when we're going to actually take the big swings you have to stay on the big swings or you're not in on I think it's, swings. Chad, it's before you take it, I want to say one thing I, I think the reason why there's that feeling a little bit is just a Trey Green blow up over the past you know couple of weeks and now the, it's not the, the trade green blow up as much as it's where we we know where Trey green is going yeah, to end gonna up. Say then the trade green link on top of that. So I think that's where you're getting the kickback, but I love well, one. I, I, people, uh, people have no patience. Like they, they cannot, uh, they want, they say they want the coach to go all in and be involved in these top high level recruits. Right. But you know why Mick never really messed with it? after the first three or four years here because he knew how these things typically end right you lose and then and then you've passed on other options because you're all in on this option and if you don't make it happen it hurts now what i will say is it hurts a lot less now than it did then Completely because the different transfer runners. portal changes everything. Yep. Because this is, and, and I think Aaron and I are the ones who talked about this the other night. Coaches now, like it used to be like, look, we have to have, we have to get a freshman point guard, right? Like right. have to get a freshman point guard. So mm-hmm. if we miss out on our one and we miss out on our two, guess what? We still have to get a freshman point guard. And if we miss out on our three, and now we're down to four or five on our list. 
Like how far down the list are you if you're your fourth or fifth target at one position? Right. And now coaches are just saying, look, I'm going to have one or two guys at the top of my board. Um, if we don't get either of them, we just roll it into the portal and we'll start recruiting that position for the next recruiting cycle. Right. It just, it changes, it changes the entire way that recruiting is happening. Um, and guess what? Here's a dirty little secret. It also means they don't have to fly all over the country in like four day windows to see like 30 kids. Watch it. Right. They can say, look, these are the two or three kids that we've got our eye on. We're going to spend our time and focus, making sure these evaluations are right, making sure for our top targets, the kids know that we're there so that we can be seen and, and show them how much of a priority they are. And you're not running around in like a side gym in the middle of like, you know, Tucson. When you're Tucson. From, when you're from Cincinnati, you're all the way out in Tucson because you got a guy that's like fourth on your list. Yep. And, and you got to, you know, you got to fly commercial if it's an assistant coach. You're flying the red eye to Tucson. You get there, you watch one game because anymore in these July events, kids are only playing one game a day. And then you get back on the plane and you fly back to, you know, the Peach Jam that doesn't have an airport. You got to fly into Atlanta, get in your car, drive three hours to the Peach Jam. Like it's eliminating a lot of that like noise. And teams are just saying we're going to we're going to focus on a couple kids. And if we can't get those couple kids, the portal it is. And guess what you can do with the portal? You can literally hop on Synergy. You can mm -hmm. break down a player. Bit by bit, all organized, all easy. You can watch every play they've ever made in college, offense and defense. Right. In the history of ever. Ever. Of ever. Ever? For ever, ever. Ever, ever. ever. Forever. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, it, the, the complete landscape has changed now. Because, sure. I, I mean, you, you look at just what this staff has done in the transfer portal this offseason. And, and, and sure, it's not we haven't seen the exact effect that Rob Landers and, and Zeke Bay have had, but I mean, they seem like they, they did a really good job putting pieces into place to kind of form a, a really strong team overall. So <laughs> who's to say that a, a good name doesn't hop into the portal. They break it down and they find them as a target. If things go, do go down to the wayside. So um, completely different times in recruiting, but uh, yeah, I mean, Call your <laughs> boy. That'd be nice because the uh, the other site just brought him in at number two, and he's just raising up boards. And obviously, he is a highly sought after recruit on all fronts. And Cincinnati is there blow for blow. And and Chad kind of th that Michigan insider said literally the exact same thing that you did as how close it's like to he the read vest. it on Bearcat Journal. I think he did maybe. <laughs> uh, how close to the vest they are, but. But, but the fact that he's reading it on Bearcat Journal and then, of course, like not having anything more of a rebuttal on his end, either he doesn't know much or that's just truly how it is. So um, that'll be an exciting race to watch. Hopefully uh, Wes ha is the closer as he's always been. Let's, let's, let's hope so. I uh, guess a timestamp there, unless anything else on this front. When is the uh, when are you planning on the big man one, Chad? Is that next week? Uh, here in a, I'm, I'm going to try to get it done in these next couple of days. Obviously, we're, we're working right. on some stuff here at home, and, and camp will start. Um, yeah. but yeah, I'll have it up here in the next week to ten days. Um, right. I, I've got most of the legwork, like that. You know, that's the you, you get done with the summer, and then you start making calls. I've been making calls on the guards and the bigs. Mm -hmm. Um, so I've got most of that information. Uh, that I need. I just need to have time to actually, you know, sit down and 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 do the writing side of it. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, time stamp that sucker, and that means it is now time for the BBP mail bag. Unless Aaron, do you have anything uh, conference realignment that you want to? Um, I did want to say. With? I did want to say today is the first official day for. Brett Yormark. Okay. Yeah, I mean that yeah, that that doesn't count. Welcome. That, nope. Why doesn't that count? What do you mean that doesn't count? 
It's because his, he had to start. He had to start three weeks ago. Uh, that's, why said, <laughs> that's why I said official. It is his first. Yeah, it doesn't count. He had to start. Day. He was called to duty <laughs> day before his uh, his official uh, report date. Thanks for the five bucks, Tonk. We appreciate it, Tonk. Uh, but but yeah, I, for a guy who maybe he's now Did getting you do that paid. With your mouth print. Yeah, pretty cool, right? <laughs> like we need that as a sound effect. Do that again. Talk. <laughs> I got a whole gang of these tricks, man. Oh my god, Aaron, you can't just let something like that go and I try know. to keep talking. Sometimes things need to be addressed. I don't have words for any of that. Um, but yeah, worth mentioning. It's his first official day. Maybe he's now collecting a paycheck. I don't know. Tonk. Welcome, Brett. <laughs> Welcome. Brett Yormark. And and you guys did a good job on the nightcap rehashing the whole we're open for business. We're not going to go shopping there. We don't have enough what? money to shop here. The whole was thing awesome. was so bogus. Yeah. I mean, it's a... Uh, it's, it's That was like Mi- Phil Castellini on opening day. Right. It's like Mickey Mouse stuff out there on the West Coast. And then he circles back and tries to, you know, trace his... It's, it's, it's like every time I say anything remotely like not even scandalous on this pod where I'm like in my head, I'm like, Oh gosh, did I try to not say that he literally came back on later and said, by the way, when I, I said that stuff earlier, yeah. that's neither here nor there. Maybe talk, what, talk. not, maybe not my most collegial moment. <laughs> what? Yeah. I was in my, just say I was in my feelings. That would, that and that, and that is the exact perfect phrase for that. The tonk honk. <laughs> I like it. Donk. Donk. Right. Unreal. All right. Well, uh, are we ready to mailbag a boy up? Yeah. I mean, and I if did. you'd like to sponsor the mailbag uh, or the timestamps, or if you'd like to give my wife a job so we can have insurance, uh, my DMs are open. <laughs> shameless. I'm shameless. That's why you have your own platform. You can say whatever the hell you want. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we, we decided we're going to do things a little bit different because we're not going to be lacking, uh, content with the, the summer being over with football being underway, camp being underway, um, right. basketball right around the corner. It feels like, um, we're only going to be taking the best three questions from each of the mailbags. So if you do want to make sure that your question is asked and you don't hear it in that particular section of the mailbag, feel free to drop a donation in the chat, as some of you are already accustomed to doing. On YouTube, it's down at the bottom, I believe. On uh, if you're if you're watching on Twitch, there's currently not an option. But the more that we get the Twitch up and running with the video games and what have you that we have planned out. Um, and also with uh, just watching here in the stream, um, that should be something that you can get eventually. What's your thought on Fall Guys? I told you I don't, I don't know what. You Fall haven't Guys looked is. it up yet. You haven't no. examined Fall Guys I, yet. I was still moving logs and oh, and you're gonna be gone for a week or whatever. Yeah, I gotta, I, I gotta find people to play me in Fall Guys. I, some, I, I, I have, I've never played Fall Guys. Got some things going on, man. Like I, I, Red Dead is fun. It was fun once but, once the story was over, though. I wasn't trying to play Red Dead Online. Um, no, I'm not. I'm I'm just doing the storyline over. Yeah. Easy um, boy. Okay, boy. The the problem with that is like I've already done it, so I'm not reacting to it as if it's new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which I think like it like that's so important in like the the streaming world, like. It, it, you, people need your authentic reaction to like this is the game that I'm playing and I'm just playing a game I've played before so I don't think it's as exciting there should be like 16 games available for free in the uh yeah but I don't I don't know I think God of War and I played little, God of War little Fortnite the new God of on War. Fortnite see see how you do uh, Kelsey Kelsey has been playing Fortnite some on the stream like as I try to figure out all the back end stuff um yeah. all the bells and whistles so she plays and i like uh i'm like her uh uh moderator <laughs> if you will um she got a victory royale victory royale the other day on stream oh wow yeah her Still and, us? 
Uh, duos, her and one of her volleyball teammates. Yeah. So uh, whoever out there got wrecked by two 12-year-old <laughs> girls. <laughs> I have work. not played much. I'd say, I'd say I've played five times. I got one victory royale. And I got one. I camped one. Like, they just couldn't find me. Yeah, it was because, yeah, I was just hiding. And then, like, yeah. it, it came down to me and another guy. And I just kept on jumping and, you know, jumping and shooting and jumping and shooting. And I yeah. won. He, was, I won. he did the same thing you did. He was just as bad as you were. And, and you yeah. got the advantage. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, terrible player. Right. One of needs to win. Actually, Kelsey's not good, like, you know, not good at it by a, a relative comparison. But for a 12-year-old girl, she actually she's pretty good. Aaron, are we going to do all the questions this time, or? No, I put it in the mailbag that this was what we were going to be doing. So okay, well, I didn't get the memo of which three we're doing, so I'm right. excited. <laughs> um, uh, 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 where was it? Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. My bad. Oh, yes. All right, so the first question from the football mailbag. In the perfect world, what type of offense does Gino want to run? How does it look different than Denbrock? I don't know yet. Um, I mean, from, from talking to him, like, in the spring and, uh, you know, just from some behind-the-scenes stuff, like, they, he wants to, to, to be a little – he wants to be balanced. He wants to have a power running game. Uh, but then have the ability to to strike over the top. Um, and I think that's just logical from what we've seen from Vic, right? Like that's it's the kind of offense that they want to run. They wanna they wanna be able to wear you down and then deliver big blows uh when they've got you kind of on the ropes. Um I don't think that part is gonna be all that much different. We'll see formationally, like does he um does he go a little more 12 personnel? Does he, what does he do to get, you know, the tight ends on the field? Um, and that's, that's going to continue. Like uh, you, you've got Lenny and Josh right now. Shaman is on the come up. I know they're super high on Kamari Anderson who got invited to the Under Armour game today Shout and, out. and Jackson McGowan. Um, so, and, and Peyton Singletary, Who's, who's getting back to healthy and, and going to be a threat at that K position going forward, uh, Caleb Schmitz. So um, that that part personnel-wise is going to be interesting. Uh, but when it comes down to it, I think a lot of the stuff conceptually isn't going to be that, that far off. I, I guess in the running game, that'll be interesting. Is he more of an outside zone, outside run guy? Uh, that would be kind of a differentiate from Denbrock that was uh, more of a between the tackles uh, inside zone type. So um, I think those two areas, personnel and design of how they want the run game to attack you uh, will be interesting to watch with Gino as the offensive coordinator. I, I do want a little bit more of like quick pitches you know, well, that's quick, outside quick zone. Sweeps. That's getting yeah. the ball on the press. right. Well, a couple of plays that they ran at at the spring game, and if you remember this, it was just a just a quick pitch, and you had two pulling guards running in front of you. And uh, I mean, it just seemed as if you yeah. know, a lot of the time it was just running in between the tackles, and then you know, Ford is able to find a crease and burst one for a big gain up the middle. Just kind of a little bit more getting the ball to your top playmakers out in space. I think you saw that. A little bit last season with kind of you know the quick pitch passes to Trey Tucker and, and players of that sort, but a little bit more of that, you know, ball to your playmakers in space because I think that's something that they can outmatch every single team that they play this year, maybe outside of Arkansas, that they just literally have speed and ability to 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 go mismatches on the outside. So I'm excited to see that. I'm gonna be the one who says something crazy and I don't know that it's going to look that much different than Denbrock's. I don't think that Denbrock's offense was that bad. I don't think it was either. That's why I, I don't think it's going to be all that different in what they're trying to accomplish. 
I just think the way that they try to accomplish things, there's going to be a couple wrinkles that'll be interesting to see. Does it? Yeah, you hope that you see more outside runs. Do you see more yeah. twelve personnel? Well, like, I, just, I, I hope that maybe when you call some of these running plays, like you're not trying to like, you know, run on a long, long third down, or you know, just some of the. There were some play. Yeah, but that's session. like it happens once, and people act like it happened right. thirty-seven. Times. Right. Right. Yeah. The, so the frustration roots from that first down you gain one yard second down you run the same play right you gain two yards and then all of a sudden yeah but in the third quarter in the fourth quarter you run that same play and you gain four yards and you run it again and you gain six yards because you right. beat the defense up early in the game like mm-hmm. that's so for as the much question will be how much is downhill and how much is right to the perimeter i've for as much flack as denbrock caught from the fan base and for him having, oh, I don't know, the best offense that has ever been put together for the Cincinnati right. Bearcats. Um, well, first and third best offense in school history. No big deal. Jesus. <laughs> uh, over under on a .88 average composite rating for the 2023 class. 2024, right? Yeah, 2024 class. This is the 2023 class that they're right. recruiting right now. Right. Uh, or unless that is, um, are they going to see a jump to the end of this class that gets them over 88? And the answer is no, because they're essentially done. Unless you can end up with um, homeboy from Michigan. He's not going to put them. Like, you're at the point now you've got so many recruits that one kid is not going to jump you. It doesn't put you – I haven't messed with the calculator. That significantly. Um, for 24, the key is going to be – right now there's a, a pretty large number of four-star kids in Ohio. Um, if they can make inroads on that, you know, hall of four-star kids – then you could see a, an, an average rating up around, you know, getting at that point where 88 is a threat. My guess is it'll still be another year. I think they're two years away from essentially where every kid they get, the average is right at a four star. Does 89 the, is a four star. Does the transfer portal affect your class rating? So it does. There are two now. Uh, 24-7 okay. ha, now has an overall rating that includes the portal so. um but uh i don't i'm not going to speak on what i think of their portal ratings it's probably about what i think of the crystal ball ratings and why you, you're able to change them once you lock them in so recruiting i know i've explained to you this to you many times recruiting changes aaron there have been three kids in this class that committed to uc that if i was playing the crystal ball i would have the knowledge would have told me to crystal ball them to Cincinnati. And then when things change, I would have had to have gone back after the fact and make a change. I think it's okay to take the L. It's not your career reputation on the line. Which is why I wouldn't lock in until I was 100% positive. The only way you're 100% positive is if, if you put your crystal ball in the day the kid signs his letter of intent. And that's that defeats the purpose of having the feature. So does I hate the in. feature. I don't do it. I know you don't. The whole thing's dumb. Your take on it is dumb. That's agreed to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> what is there more of? Wins in football or losses in basketball for their upcoming seasons? Losses in basketball. Like this is. I don't know that you know. This is if they're twenty-one and. 10 i think that's a pretty damn good and then you got a conference tournament and and a postseason tournament at that point you're unless you win one or both of those you're talking 11 or 12 losses um i think you're probably dancing if you end up with 10 win or 10 losses and if not you're in the nit like you're 21 and 10 and you got a couple you know a win or two in maui and you know you're you're right on that 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 fringe range. Bless you. You look like. Are you okay? Oh yeah. Okay. I 
You're lucky I muted. That would have that would have blasted. You're an aggressive right sneezer. Oh, it's a it's a loud one. You are an aggressive sneezer. Like I, the, I think your body like spasmed. In the office at my day job, the the entire opposite corner says, "Bless you, Brent." <laughs> Thank you. That is not a surprise. Um, I'll I'll go with. Uh, I think there's more losses in basketball, but um, I mean you're you're right in that same range, right? Like I think football is going to be 10, 11, 12 wins. Basketball is going to be. 10, 11, 12 losses. So you're right. It's close. I, Mert, That's why it's a good question. I was going to say, tuck, th tuck this one away and bring it back up after both seasons are over. Yeah. And oh, and I he think, will. He's got a spreadsheet where he does I, that. Kind I think of thing. that would be that would be a fun conversation to have uh, after the seasons are over. Uh, was, what, 13 wins had you in the college football playoff last year. So, I mean, yeah, that's close. It's going to be close. Uh, how likely is it? Uh, and there were two questions that were kind of the same. Um, but basically, uh, I'm surprised to discover that we, the last time we won um, back to back, um, yeah, the back to back uh, shootouts takes you back to 95 96 for eight and 18 cents. Well, we'll take a turn around this long term. And Xavier is winning centos. Xavier has never won four crosstown shootout in a row before this could change this year they've owned the rivalry since 19 how likely is it that west miller will have his team in shape to stop x from getting a historic four straight win in december uh mike rayfeld is the uh strength and conditioning coach right the director of athletic performance they'll be in shape and i know that's not the the root of your question but you left it out there for me to take the easy way out so i'm gonna i don't know go win the game i like, got I... Go win the game. They'll have enough talent. Xavier has ah, a good coach. Third arena. UC has a good coach. It's going to be a loaded fifth third arena. It's going to be loud. You've got a, a, some guys on this team that, especially Jeremiah Davenport, that is not beaten X. They're going to win again. Win the game. Um, Sean Miller I, being back at Xavier doesn't help anything for Cincinnati. No, he's very good. He's an excellent coach. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't know, like, uh, why have they not been able to win two in a row for so long? Because they can't win at the Centos Center. So it's not a problem for this year. That's a problem for next year. Gosh. Even the TBT, gosh, jeez. <laughs> they won the alumni game. One, yeah. one of them. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, yeah. Well, what if the Severs rolling around Bearcats are hot, hot, hot off of a Maui victory? Oh, man. One can hope. One can hope. I was going to say, I, I think we need to get back to scheduling them after the first of the year. TV decides that. It has well, nothing to do. They decide every. They decide conference realignment. So I'm, I'm tired of TV. Get TV <laughs> out of here. When are we moving on to streaming? TV. 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 I do enjoy TV. <laughs> Your NCIS? <laughs> Never seen an episode, but I'm sure it's great. <laughs> You're so old. Uh, after you pan um, you wake up tomorrow and it's 12 15 22, as in December 15th. Uh, fast forwarding for four months from now. Uh, after you panic for an hour or so about randomly time traveling and missing much of the football season, what's the first thing you seek out related to UC basketball? Wait, when am I coming so, out of a coma or whatever? December 15th. December 15th. Four months from now. Uh, the record? <laughs> All right. I, think that's, I guess the first place to start, right? Like, who's, who's been covering BCJ? <laughs> uh, maybe, right? Maybe uh, where, where Collier decided to go? When do we go into this random time travel? Like, right yeah, now, I guess right? that, yeah, right to like at this instant. It said you wake up tomorrow and it's 12 15 22. Oh, okay. Well, that's not on the. I know. I only have 200 characters. I know. I'm just saying it's not on the thing that I'm reading. Um, yeah. How did Maui go? What's their record? Do they, does Isaiah call you a Bearcat? Because that by then 
signing day will have passed. Like what what did the uh what did the the November signing period net for the Bearcats? Um who's leading the team in scoring, maybe? Would be kind of in the back, but something I'd be interested in. Call Berg and see how the dunks are going. Like are they dunking the ball? Hensley leads the team year. with 30. Right. Berg's now part owner of BCJ, and you have no idea. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah. If Collier commits, who else from the 23 class is most likely to follow? Uh, Arrington Page, because that's his high school teammate, close friend, and Cincinnati is one of the schools that are recruiting both very heavily. They also need a big. Then they need a big man. Once, once they seal up the, the point guard, I think big would be the next immediate – position of need correct yeah gosh land big i agree if, if i woke up saw they won maui and call your committed I'd, I'd be like all right i can go back to sleep this is this is my favorite land big <laughs> comment of the night get yeah. off get off aaron's lawn espn you're right now page is 23 yeah i can page 23 uh, Aaron, I'm pulling funds together. We're in the mailbag. We're in the, the banks. We are the in banks. the banks. We are the in banks. the banks. Um, pulling funds together for the timestamp, and I want to know if you're more of a baritone or a falsetto. Uh, in my younger days, I was more of a falsetto. Uh, Ooh. Let's hear it. No, not happening. Well, okay. he's not younger anymore. I'm, I'm, also, I'm also not getting paid. <laughs> are you baritone now? Um, it's slipping into baritone. I can still hit some high notes, but I certainly cannot hit high notes like I would. You I can hit to. some high notes. You cannot hit the high notes. I mean, 15 years of smoking cigarettes like just wrecked my voice. Plus, got not you, having got you Barry uh, Manilow right now. I don't know, Charlie. I got a guy going on about some white walls. Let me get back to you. I was gonna. I was gonna. Um, I was gonna give a. Uh, so my daughter's volleyball team. This is her fourth season playing. Like uh, like club or like not club volleyball, but like recreational volleyball. You're gonna sing, and huh? Were you gonna sing? No, I'll get to it. Okay. And the past three seasons, they have made the championship game and have lost in the championship game. And their fourth try was Sunday, and they won the first game, and then they immediately had to play the the a new team in the finals for the championship. So there was like 45 minutes between games and I was, uh, I was going to call the team together. And I was going to say, all right, girls, only one thing left to do. Let's go win the whole fucking thing. Um, no but I, didn't think got it it. I don't think it would have gone over. Well, one, I probably, <laughs> probably would have been in some headlines. Uh, <laughs> they, they wouldn't have got it They're, Kelsey why is your dad so weird why is he cussing at us because he does a great Lou Brown duh again no one, <laughs> no one even knows that name the best impression he does is Lou Brown from Major League so you know 20 years of smoking will do that to you yeah well, I don't. I, I, don't I always got to kick the one. The one Xavier fan joke that always made me laugh is that um, what was the show with the lunch? Was it The Simpsons or whatever? The lunch lady that always had the like raspy smoker's voice, and they said that. that I always sounded like the lunch lady from one of the cartoons because I, you know, have a smoker's voice. Uh, rapid fire. Would you rather have a lifetime of giving massages to Deshaun Watson or Robert Kraft? <laughs> no. <laughs> Halloween or St. Patrick's Day? I don't care for... I'm not a holiday guy, so I don't really care for either. Um, Brent, I would guess one? Halloween because she gets candy and I get to eat it. Which one's your favorite drinking holiday, bro? Oh man, I I love getting wild on Halloween, dressed up, seeing everyone else dressed up. But it's got to be St. Patrick's Day for me. Are you are you a dresser upper for St. Patty's also? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, okay. I, not like insane, but I'm wearing my green. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I don't I drink go on the amateur holidays. Like yeah, here, Chad. 
I'm a drinker. Like I, I drink when I drink. Like the kids, the kids are talking, Chad. Saint Sorry. Saint Patrick's Day is also in the thick of like I'm... conference tournaments or <laughs> you know NCAA tournaments, and I'm like, oh baby. Oh baby, yeah, yeah. And, and and you're getting after it. Guinness is flowing. Yeah. You know, Jameson shots. It's, car bombs. Uh, yep, car bombs. Uh, the, the whole nine yards. Uh, St. Patrick's Day is revolved around having fun, getting wild. So is Halloween, but yeah. it's more of the. Uh, oh, got to pick out an outfit. Got to figure out what we're doing. So, Just uh, give me either anyway. holiday with right. sun, not rain. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree with that one as well. No doubt. St. Like, Patrick's Day, man. I don't even care if it's you know sixty in in what March, right? Or or you know. And this is supposed to be rapid fire. Yeah. Just anyway. just go, Aaron. Sixty in March or you know sixty in October. 60 in, in October. Well, yeah. Yeah. Give me the okay. sunny one, but hey, I tell you what. This past Halloween in New Orleans, that was wild. I can only Absolutely imagine. insane. But uh, man, I mean, they're both so fun. But kind of the college basketball aspect thrown into it as well kind of separates it themselves for the St. Patrick's Day. I get you. Lobster or crabs? Lobster. Crab. I like lobster. I'm lobster as well. Um, I do like crab. Lobster's but- too sweet for me. I don't like my food sweet. Like lobster's got a right. sweet, way sweeter than crab. Yeah. I like crab. I, I like a good lobster roll or a lobster tail, so. But See, I'm more like of a, like a crab cake, like a Maryland, like authentic, like authentic legit part. Maryland crab cake is pretty damn good. That's up my dad's alley too. So yeah, crab. I love it. I also think that when you crack a lobster, you get more meat than so you're not having to work as hard for the the meat that you get. That's why I do a crab cake because somebody else has already crab done the work, done the work. and crab then cheese. they make the the lump the real lump crab yeah. cake. Crab. Although I I have mastered also, the uh, the crab, just pull it out. Ooh, the crab bit. dip is killer. Mm-hmm. Like a, a party staple, cream cheese crab, whatever. Yeah, right. Old bay. Yeah. All right. Good. So we so we all like crustaceans. <laughs> Give me it all. <laughs> uh, which popular conspiracy theory do you think is legitimately real, and which oh, one wow. is your favorite that is just completely ridiculous and <laughs> most likely not true? Okay. Uh, this was aimed at me because I mentioned that I was a conspiracy. You theorist. are a big conspiracy. Um, okay, we Take never landed on the moon. I certainly don't think that was the thing that happened. <laughs> right? Like, we <laughs> never landed on the moon. In the 1950s? Like, it was like 40 years after the airplane was invented. And we can't go back, and now we're, we're, sending, we're sending a rocket up there unmanned because why would we... Send more Wouldn't people. We always up. be on the moon if in the 1960s we, we landed on the moon. We have never been to the moon. We have never been to the moon. We we never. lost the plans for how to get up there because it wasn't <laughs> saved anywhere. What? No. Yeah, we've never been to the moon. We have never been to the moon. Um, I was gonna say 9-11 was was an inside job, but not here, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, and then the, the one that is just ridiculous and not true, uh, JFK Jr. is not alive. Like the QAnon stuff, it's like a hundred. The QAnon stuff was hysterical to read, yeah. But Jesus, people are crazy. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, come on. There's no if there was look, if there was a Bigfoot, we would have found hundreds of Bigfoot carcass, right? Like over the years, like we would have found dead Bigfoot people just out in the woods, like, oh, look. There's, there's a dead one. Like, that's how we know it's real. Like, come on. There, there's so, never any proof that, 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 or the Loch Ness Monster. Right. That another is. one. <laughs> Drain the fucking lake. <laughs> like, Get him out of there. Well, I mean, you have, you have radars now and everything. I mean, right. you, can, heat, you can find like, people. Heat sensors. Yeah, get so, out of here. So, uh, on. I had a roommate. Um, I'm Actually, not a big conspiracy theorist at all. But, uh, but I had a roommate who was, he was a flat earther and he was uh, heavy on chemtrails, heavy on the fact that, you know, some birds aren't real. They're, birds aren't real. Yeah, birds aren't real. That's a good they're, one. They're, I love that one. Cameras. <laughs> I, I mean, he is like, but like flat earth. G- people, or, uh, 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 the phone, the 5G. 5G. 5G is, we're all going to yeah. melt. Yeah. 5G, coronavirus. I, I, I mean, just kind of all of it tied into one. He but he was I mean, he was flat earth to a T to the point where we literally had had a night where we all sat sat him down 
and we called in a real scientist, like a real space scientist. And he, he zoomed in with us. Like an intervention. You had to intervention yeah. your We had your an intervention for him. A and science a, intervention. And a true scientist, NASA scientist, <laughs> zoomed in and had a back and forth conversation with my roommate. And uh, and like a week a week passes and like we asked him like, hey, how, how's everything going? He's like, he's like, I don't care. The earth's still flat, man. It's still flat. <laughs> And like volcanoes are CGI, they aren't real. I mean, it was a. Uh, oh my I mean, god! You had a science intervention. NASA That's pictures. The greatest thing I've ever heard. Most what? most of NASA's pictures are CGI, but yeah. They, oh, he they, thought that's what he was they, on too. They they state that. Yeah. Yeah. He so said that, he said that's, every that's picture real. of the Earth being round is is CGI. I I don't know. It's a. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of flat Earthers out there. But we know which one is real. That's the part I, I think we derailed. Like which one, which conspiracy theory is real? I don't even know. Well, I told you, um, you brought up the moon. I, I 100% think that that's a okay. real uh, JFK. Like the actual shooting of JFK, that conspiracy has been people. There's like 400,000 books about that. Well, yeah. Tupac still alive. Area uh, 51 is real. The for sure. Yeah, the UFOs, UFOs are real now. We we took us until well, <laughs> the pandemic. Well, the global yeah, pandemic. A, a hundred years later, they were like, ah, yeah, you know. Did, that's did you hear the, uh, right. like the, the Area 51 thing where like they were like Area 51 is like the, the center and we're all just like a little like a little play pieces or whatever. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a conspiracy. Dude, your theory. friend is wild. Oh, he's your wild. friend is wild. He is I need, wild. I need to be friends with your friend. Where's he getting married? <laughs> oh man, he's wild. Oh, he, he would he'd probably be like, I don't know, somewhere wild. He's getting married at Area 51, he'll, isn't he? He'll, he'll get married on the moon, probably. And we'll all just like <laughs> he'll be the first people to actually go to the moon. We will all sit there and be like, all right, look, doesn't it look round? And he'd be like, Nope, that is not nope. round. That that is it's flat. I can't see the other side. That is flatter than shit. <laughs> no, he, I, okay, I, I will say he's wild, but I will also say he's a great guy. That's that's it. He's, yeah, he's, what down, is he he's down. He's a great guy. Hiawaska is what he's marrying. Uh, <laughs> with, with it being the heart of county fair season and food lovers, what is everyone's favorite thing to get at the country fair? Mine is a county sandwich. fair. Uh, yeah, county, county fair. fair. Sorry. Uh, Country fair, county fair. It's just not that far off. It's kind of same. <laughs> Everything's deep fried. Take I mean, your pick. <laughs> is, is a ribeye sandwich a county fair thing? Like, I know they serve them at the county fair, but not like. Out here. Where's the Ohio State Fair at? Is that in Columbus? Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, okay. the Ohio State Do you think Ohio State Columbus. was letting that go anywhere else? Right. Um, well, I mean, it's got to, like, look. The Ohio State Fair. Oh, it's got to ah. be something on a stick. <laughs> Okay. Right, like if it's a if it's a county fair, it's got it. So I love like a good corn dog is phenomenal. Like cornbread okay. wrapped around a hot dog. I'll go. Give uh -oh. me a back, Aaron. Love chat wants to put her to God something. bless. Um, <laughs> get out of here. I got it. I I'll go. I'll go corn dog. Okay. Elephant ears, fries, funnel cake. Yeah, funnel cake. Kelly's huge on funnel cakes. Like Kelly's, Kelly's a big funnel cake person. Did you guys go um, down go down the path of like fried Oreos, fried cookie dough? I only fried had fried Oreos. Oreos for the first time last month. Yeah, guys, there's still one love chat in, in, in the in the. I know. I'm trying. It says I'm not allowed to block I, this one. I told uh, you that's why I had put them in timeout last time. Uh, there you go. Yeah. That's why. Um, yeah, um, I'm kind of. What you're a you're a dessert person for Not your, really. your county fair food? I mean, so ours is the Indiana State Fair is literally right down the right down. But the you road. don't have county fairs in Indiana? Like we just had the Kenton County Fair like two weeks no, ago. No, there there are. I've been to a few. Um I'd say turkey legs are out there for me. Pork tenderloin sandwiches are awesome for Pork sure. Pork tenderloin sandwich and uh and good old good old uh Indiana, that's a staple here. So, yeah, pork tenderloin sandwiches. That I, I, I don't know. I think that uh, can't go wrong with like anything that's just fried and on a stick. Yeah, I, I mean anything fried chicken, chicken tender basket with fried cheese curds and some 
chicken saute and a little lemonade shake up. And then you, then you go to the alcohol area and you get a quick beer or three. And then you head back out. You get some cheese, more cheese. And then You're a you... triple fister at the county fair, aren't you? Oh, my God. You're drinking beer like this. Like you got the two back here yep. and the one in the front. Yep. And you're drinking the one in the front while trying not to spill the two in the back. Yeah, yeah. That, Aaron, you and I. My I man. Think, or do you I, have a waterfall system where the two in the back just keep the one in the front bottomless? Mine is uh, ooh, the waterfall. Ooh, ooh, that, that, that could be way. fun. Mine is like a quick Chardonnay, pound, throw away, two beers to carry. You don't get a Chardonnay at the county fair? They have local Indiana raised wine. Pound a quick Chardonnay. Take two beers. You walk around. We're, Jesus, we're we're muting. We 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 muted Brent. He's out of here. He's... Yeah, you're out. <laughs> Get out. Chardonnay at the county fair. We're going That's to have the... some Chardonnay and a pork tender. He, he's still trying to talk, and he's still muted. <laughs> All right, that's the mailbag. Brent, you're unmuted. Get us out of here. Well, after uh, I finish this Chardonnay with George ladies. Washington the third, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> how's that for a callback? He, well, he's not old enough to drink yet. No, not quite yet. Well, maybe back in the day he was when his name would be. Anyway, there we go. Yeah. Anyway, um, so guys, another fantastic BBP. Uh, Anything closing remarks out of you two before we shut this one down? Yeah. Um, if you did want to drop the the donation during the mailbag, um, I, I think we'll in, just – if you want to interrupt a question, we will interrupt our, our answer, and we'll just move on to the next question with your donation. So um, that will be a thing. So just wanted to let you know if you want to just stop us from whatever chaos and ridiculousness we're on to, uh, you have that power. Chad, anything? Nope, I'm good. It's good. He's good. Let's, uh, let's get it rolling. It is uh, it's football season, boys. It is. Camp season. camp is upon us. Football season's here. Stay locked into BCJ. Obviously, we'll have you covered. Sideline to sideline, end zone to end zone. Big special thank you, of course, to Danco Transmission, as always. Big thank you to my pals, my my, my buddies, my one-two punch, Aaron Smith and Chad Brendel. But I am Brent Young, yet again, another fantastic BBP presented by BearcatJournal.com. See ya!